Hey everyone, it's Sonia here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us today for a heart to heart. Um, on the last podcast, number 91, I talked about how we were going to have a special guest today. And we have Danielle McGinnis with us today. You can see she's right here, this beautiful soul. I'm going to just take another second before we bring her on. And um, Heart to Hearts, as you know, do get posted to my YouTube channel as well. The video component will be posted through YouTube onto my other platforms. So you can definitely check the video component if you'd like to meet Danielle and myself face to face having this conversation. Alternatively, you're just listening to the recording. That's perfect because you can listen to the recording when you're going for a walk, while you're doing dishes. And then remember, have that notepad and pen handy because we might say something, we will say something that'll trigger some notes. So today we're gonna talk about everyday systems and processes. And I connected with Danielle, actually it was just last week because maybe two weeks ago, but it wasn't that long ago. And she's exactly what I need. So you're gonna resonate a lot with what she has to say because we all have different skills and talents and we all attract just like you listening to this podcast today or watching or catching the live or not the live, the video, we all attract in our lives what we need. We already know what we have. We attract people to help fill in those voids that we don't even realize we're missing. So Danielle, please take a second to introduce yourself. All right. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited to be here and to chat with you, have this discussion. Um, but as you said, I am Danielle McGinnis. I am the owner of uh, Cutting Edge Operations. It's a online business management agency or that is um, really stream designed to streamline the operations of solopreneurs. Um, I started the business because I'm a mom and wife myself. And I found that um, I left corporate America, came over and decided to try the self-employment thing to have more time and flexibility with my family. Um, while I was doing that, I realized that without systems and being consistent and having certain habits in place, um, I was a bit of a train wreck and all over the place. <laughs> so I started the business to, once I got my systems and my routines set up in place to set myself up for success, I decided to help others do the same thing. Awesome, awesome. And you know, there's so many things that you just touched on right there that we can expand on. But the first thing I wanna just to say, solopreneurs, right? <laughs> that in itself says a lot. So yes. ideally, who do you find gets the best results when they're working with you? I know solopreneurs, but within that category. Yeah, um, I seem to be um, really successful with coaches and consultants. Um, and it seems that way because they've got so certain processes that can easily be automated, uh, certain routine processes that can be automated. I also have um, had great success with web designers, uh, like branding and web designers, social media agencies, same kind of thing. Basically, anyone who's got a process that you can put on rinse and repeat, like you can just do the same thing over and over again. Those are the types of things that I absolutely love automating for people. <laughs> so yes, you, you've identified a couple really cool niches that I know will be catching this. Um, but more importantly, what I, my biggest takeaway was the rinse and repeat factor. So for me and in the clients that I typically work with, that would be very similar to you, entrepreneur or parents whether you're married or not married, but you have that extra dynamic in your life where it's not just one part of your life, like your business that you are solely working on all the time. Exactly. Can you explain in what you do a simple process that you, people could start to implement that would fit that category in terms of blending or starting or enhancing their business and professional life? Um, well, the first thing I'll say is um, I set boundaries for myself um, on a business and personal level. So that being said, um, one thing that I've done in my personal life to enhance my enhance it when it comes to my business is I set uh, automations on my cell phone, um, things like that that are, for instance, once 
So I'm working, you've got my full undivided attention between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Um, after 5 p.m., those notifications, they turn off. Anything work-related, I don't get unless I physically go into my phone and look for those things. So that's one boundary that I like to encourage my clients right on, right away um, to, and to, to help to enhance. So when you're working in your business, you're all in on your business. When you're doing your personal life and you've got your, your dog or your kids or your husband to fully be there. Um, so that's a, that's a boundary that I always uh, recommend when I start working with my clients. Um, and so I don't know if you want me to talk about the business end of it, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, one thing with the business end that I found that was important for me starting out before I had any systems in place was I was so tied to my email because I'm always looking at my email to see like if I'm getting a new lead or if someone's interested. And then if they're interested, you want to hurry up and capture that lead and send them your scheduling link before they go and find someone else. So one thing that I implemented was I use a, uh, a customer relationship management or CRM tool called Dubsado, and I implemented what's called a lead capture process. A lot of people think of that as, as a contact process. And that means sort of like when you're scheduling you know, a doctor's appointment or anything, you go to a website, you click on the appointment time on your own, you get a notification that says, hey, Danielle, your appointment is scheduled, we'll see you then. That's a very simple process that I set that I make sure all of my clients have at the beginning so that once again, when you're on that me time or your personal time, you don't have to be checking your email to see what new leads are coming in and hurry, 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 make sure you send them a scheduling link. It happens in the background automatically for you. Um, so that's something that I absolutely say is a must starting out. So those are two big tips that you had talked about that you had shared. And it sounds to me like it doesn't matter which stage you're at with your business boundaries. If you don't have them implemented, implement them as number one and, and automating the lead capture. Exactly. Okay. And I can sit here and say, I've been in business for quarter. while. I don't have my lead capture automated. Not like that. So I know Danielle and I will be having a chat afterwards. And here's why systems and processes are so important. Because I'm an expert at helping to bring health and happiness to people's lives. I am not an expert at processes and systems. This is why we attract what we need. And there are going to be so many people at different stages that can pick up something. And the one thing that we do know is if you're listening to podcasts, if you're always searching for more information, you are searching to make change. And it can be as simple as more time in your life. Because you remember the three things that we're trying to achieve when it comes to listening to these podcasts, and especially um, my clients, is time freedom, elevated finances, and balanced health. Danielle's just shared a great way of achieving time freedom so you can have the time to work on those other elements. Solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, let's talk a little bit about network marketing. Okay. okay. There's a lot of people in network marketing that fall into the entrepreneur and solopreneur realm. Mm -hmm. They're typically, and, and I'm not saying exclusively, but they're typically females mm -hmm. looking to support their family or their lifestyle in their own way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would agree that these two points that you mentioned would help them in leaps and bounds with their business. Because right. I'm always talking to people about having more than one source of income, right? How it's really important. So people are leaning into network marketing, social selling, doing something more, but the more you do, the more you need systems and processes. <sighs> Absolutely. So can you, uh, can you pick that up for us and just kind of explain some of the benefits of working with someone like yourself and not just the two points that you would help them in, but how it helps outside of their, how the structure and processes helps outside of their business? Sure. Um, well, the first thing is like when it comes to uh, the, the multiple streams of income, that's a goal that I'm leaning into myself a little bit more this year. Um, systems allow you to kind of be able to throw your hands up and let things go on autopilot. So like, I'll just use for example, I've got a client who is a consultant and she also has an online course 
and she also just started a membership community on Circle. And so this particular client, she can't be all things in all these places at once. And so she doesn't have to be. Her job is to show up as a consultant, give 100% of what she is good at, teaching others how to start their own consulting businesses. And in the background, she just has created these different revenue streams for herself, but they're also tiers for her clients to be able to um, come to her at different levels. And so I think the multiple revenue streams are important for that reason, because if someone can't afford a high ticket item of yours, but they really are you know, digging on your content, they can come in these other doors. And so I think the real benefit of multiple streams of income is when you can tie it to your client, your ideal client, and make sure that they can reach you at any level that they're currently in in their business. And so for that particular client, I was able to automate for her, her course management. She's got an online course. So once again, when she is away from her computer and she's spending time with her family, she doesn't have to be worried about Danielle who just booked her course and paid for it, but doesn't have access yet. We automate that for her. With the membership, same exact thing. She doesn't have to be worrying about, oh my goodness, um, someone just paid for the membership. Let me get back to my computer and get that person into the group. And so, so the systems allow you to, to stay where you need to be, live the life you want, and have the things in the background that obviously are going to enhance that personal life. So none of us um, have the ability to not need money. <laughs> Realistically, we need it. So I create systems so that people can bring in that money, um, but it's, it's very low lift for them. They don't have to chase it down or chase a client or do all these things in the background again, so that when they're away, when they're with their families, they can really truly be with their families and not have to be back at the desk and, you know, this flip flop thing. So it's balance. It's balance. And, and that goes back to those three points, right? Like you had mentioned almost every single one of them. If you're freeing up their time, which it sounds like that is the main takeaway here is the processes and systems will free up their time. That's exactly. the first takeaway I, I took from exactly what you shared. But the second one is it's eliminating. So it's, it's enhancing the customer experience and the customer journey. So it's expediting that. So I will say um, in the past, and I'm working on this change as well, and I'm, yeah, I'll probably be working with you a little bit more closely with this because, or have you worked with my VA on to getting the processes and systems set up because I would use Google Forms instead of a, um, an actual landing page, which means I was limited to the next steps. You know, I was limited to having them get and access that information right away. And I know I'm not the only one sharing this, you know, they, they, the common ground is build your foundation before you add more, get good at what you're doing. But sometimes that's not easy for everybody. There's so many different personalities out there and there's the shiny object syndrome <laughs> or the easily distracted syndrome. But if you know that's who you are, the best person to align yourself with is someone like Danielle, because you're not going to change those qualities about yourself, especially if you're in your forties or fifties, you, you own who you are. So, and why would you change what makes you happy and what makes you work? So you sidebar a couple conversations and you go out a little bit, but when you find the right people to be on your team that know, okay, Sonia is like this and, and I'm just using myself, for example, I know, I know there's so many other people, but this person's like this, here's how I can help them shine their light in that way. So they're not feeling like anything is missing or they're not being stuck in the system of overwhelm. And that exactly. takes a lot off your shoulder. Now, you had your coffee cup up. Can I see? Oh, sure. What is it? Mom day. So yes. I explained to Danielle, and I like to have this with most of my heart to hearts. And if I haven't already, it would definitely be a moving trend in the, in the future. Mine says hot mess today. <laughs> and it explains my week. For those that have been um, having the privilege of hearing some of the insights, yeah, there are some days we're making decisions and the more you grow, and, and I know we're, we have a tendency of separating business and personal, but at the end of the day, and I'm sure Danielle will attest to this, we are one person building one life. It's Absolutely. not a matter of keeping things separate. That's the old world way. And that doesn't work in today's society at all. 
you know what? I had to close my door in case the dogs were barking. So we would hear a little bit less noise, <laughs> hoping mom and dad don't show up unexpectedly because that's the nature of our households and our, our community. And I love that. Um, and if they come in and they hear me talking, hopefully they don't pop on, but they might, you know, that's just <laughs> life. But the reality is if I'm letting you into my world, my world is business and pleasure together. My business and my world is business and personal mm -hmm. together. So just like you with your coffee cup, um, mom, mom day, mom day. Yeah. Mom day. <laughs> so what does that, does that mean anything to you? Um, so a friend of mine bought this for me actually. And when I look at it, um, because she's got the, she's got the shades on, she's got her purse. I'm the first person I love. I've got way more purses than I actually need. She's got her hair thrown up in kind of a messy bun. And so it makes me feel relaxed. And so when I look at that, I'm thinking about like the person who's achieved that balance that we're talking about, right? So I am, maybe I'm out having a coffee with a friend or what have you, but it's the ease for me, the, the relaxed look. Messy buns, shun, sunglasses on, and just kind of like, I'm having a day, whether she's out shopping, which very well could be me, or just grabbing a coffee. <laughs> So I love this. And for me, this is what makes these hearts to hearts real. Like we're talking business, we're talking personal, we're putting it all together. You wouldn't be able to have that mom day if you didn't feel confident about where your business is at and that every, everything was being taken care of. Absolutely. I, I joke, I joke with a lot of people when I first uh, start to work with them and I tell them, uh, well, I've got a lot of hair. You can't actually tell, but I've onboarded people sometimes washing my hair. That's to me, I can be washing my hair, I can be asleep, I can be shopping, and I'm getting, I'm getting notifications that things are happening in the background with my business, things that I don't have to stop what I'm doing to attend to. Okay, so how does that really make you feel? Honestly, from the root. Honestly, like when it first started, I, my husband will tell you, I cheered, and I'd be showing in my phone, I'm like, look, look. Someone just onboarded. Look, <laughs> um, I don't cheer anymore, but I still have what? the same. <laughs> I don't cheer anymore, but I still have the same feeling of ease. Um, and it's almost like now it's such an expectation because I've set the systems up to work for me. Um, it's it's reassuring to know that they're working. So it's like relief, reassurance that I don't have to worry. But things are going to happen. People are going to get their calls scheduled. They're going to be able to meet with me but I'm sitting on the couch with my family or I'm out having lunch with my family. So is that the best part of being an entrepreneur for you? The flexibility is definitely, yeah, I, I would say so. Like I came from corporate. I think I told you that I worked 40 hours a week, eight hours a day, loved my job, was excellent at it. I uh, was always being promoted. It wasn't that I did just didn't like my job. It was that I realized that I spent more time with the people at work than I actually did with the two people I love the most that are in my home. And so anything that will allow me to be home and have a heart attack when I take my 16 year old driving or <laughs> we talked about this off camera, yeah. <laughs> I told her the, 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 the experiences that come with raising children hasn't even scratched the surface at oh. 16. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah. Anything that allows me to be with her or my husband, he's a Star Wars fan. I'm not. But if I have to sit through a Star Wars movie or two and I can be present and do that, then everything that I've worked for all this time is totally worth it. And it's something that you really can't put into words until people experience it for themselves. Would you agree with that? I would 100% agree. I would 100% agree. Like that, uh, go ahead. No, no, you go first. Oh, I was just going to say, like, I, I have people who, uh, I think I mentioned to you on our initial call, like, my husband became self-employed first, at least four years before I even thought about it. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, well, he's his own boss. And oh, well, he's got time. You know, the honey-do list was this long because I'm like, oh, you got time. You could do this. You could fix stuff around the house. But I still didn't really get it until I became self-employed. When you can get up at 10 a.m. and decide you're going to breakfast and you don't have to worry about clocking out, sending an email, letting someone know you've got to step away. Even, honestly, even emergencies. I've been really happy to have been there 
been able to be there for family members. I've had some relatives who were ill, people that have called on me and they knew they could call on me because Danielle can step away if she needs to. She can step away and take care of this for me. So I've really appreciated and been grateful for that fact as well. Like not just the, the things that are, that are fun, but in time, so someone's time of need, they can call me and I can be there for them. So I, I love that point. You know, I watch my grandson twice a week. I've shared that normally Mondays mm -hmm. and Tuesdays. The world knows um, normally accessible certain times and maybe just by phone call because I can't be dedicating this time on a face-to-face -face if I've got a toddler, a 20-month-old running around. Like I just, I'm choosing this to be a part of my life. But there are so many people that get stuck in the corporate, this is the way it should be, Mm. At school, school, job, job, maybe, maybe, retire, maybe, um, you know, without thinking of the big picture, which is what are you going to regret the most when you are sitting there on your deathbed and you're looking back on your life and you hit it perfectly. And most of us, and, and I know that the lifestyle that we've had over the last couple of years with all of the rapid changes and that have been forced upon us have been a huge eye opener for priorities for a lot of people. Oh my goodness. Yes. And, and I personally want to say priorities for the better. Um, it it might, might be a hard pill to swallow. It might not mean for some people it's different. And I did my Facebook live this morning, which I do daily. And um, today's was thankful Thursday. And on thankful Thursday today, I talked about bills, how I'm thankful for the bills that come in when they come in and my approach to that and how it looks and how with those bills, I'm able to pay for that service, right? Whether it's groceries or whatever. So there, there's a whole plug on there, but the point is some people's lives or priorities changed financially. Some of it changed with their family. Some of it changed completely. And without getting into a deep dive on that, it's about priorities. We all look at our priorities a little bit differently. And when we have systems in place, those systems, and, and we're going to talk about those four pillars that I like to talk about shortly, and we're going to dig into them, but those systems are going to look different for everybody and start where you're at. I have a morning routine. I have an evening routine. My evening routine helps me be effective with my morning routine. That in itself is a system. And it might be where you start. You might start with your business. You might start with meal planning. Any of those things are systems and processes that help you reach your bottom line, which is more time freedom, those priorities, like balanced health. Maybe you have more time to work out. Maybe you have more time to just have that rest day and, and do what your coffee cup says and go shopping or go to the spa. And don't undervalue these things because when priorities are not in alignment, that shows up in so many different areas mm -hmm. of our life. And we're not even aware. Just think of the last time you made a decision that you were not in alignment, alignment with what your physical response was to other people in your environment. You were almost, and I'm going to go there, you were almost bitchy at them and they didn't deserve it because you were unhappy with yourself. And you don't realize it until you become aware of your mindset. So Speaking of mindset, let's jump into these four pillars. I don't think we're boring anybody. I'm sure they can listen to uh, a lot more of this. But the four pillars I talk about typically, um, meals, movement, mindset, in the relationship with money. So I would love to hear from you. Pick one and start with it in terms of processes and how it's made a different in that particular area. And we'll try to touch on all four. Okay. So for me, I'll start with movement. So. I, I try to find, I finally got myself into a routine with working out. And so for a minute there, it was not as much of a priority as, as I thought it should be, but I kind of chugged it off and just thought, okay, whatever. And I realized that there were so many things from my brain flowing differently to the way my body digested my food, all of these things that they only improve when you work out. And so Right now, I kept it very minimal because I don't want to over try to be an overachiever because I know if I bite off too much, I won't do anything at all. So right now, I've kept it to every other day, first thing in the morning. So I had to figure out my routine. Uh, my husband and I used to work out together. 
in the evening. And I realized that's not good for me because I've worked, I've done dinner and now I'm ready to relax and he's ready to go pump the iron. And I'm like, I'm ready for a nap. <laughs> so I had to switch the routine to first thing in the morning. So I get up at five 30 in the morning on my workout days and I hit it. Um, I have workout equipment in my basement. So I go down there and I work out. Um, and something that really helped me was my anniversary gift from my husband, which was an Apple watch. So honestly, I didn't realize just how motivating the watch is to make you move. So you get these reminders that say stand up, you get these rings on there for those who may not have any type of a fitness track tracker, you have rings. So you have a stand goal that you have to meet every day, which makes is very, really helpful for me because I sit at a desk. And so it's very easy for me, especially when I'm in the zone and building an automation or a system, it's super easy for me to sit here for three hours straight and not get up. So the reminders to stand are helpful. Uh, there's an exercise goal, which you only need to achieve 30 minutes a day in order to reach that goal. And then the other one is a calorie goal, which you can set according to your own personal choice, whatever. Um, keeps, it's, it's, it's something small, but big to me because I check it. I check it on the, I check it all the time. I might have checked it even before we, you know, jumped on this call just to see where I am for the day. Um, but, and then it allows me to connect with some of my closest friends who have the same goals as me. And so the reason I love that is because we keep each other in sync. It's not a competition. I don't care how many rings my friends have closed in essence. I just want to see that you're moving, but we encourage each other. Um, and it's, it's just great to just kind of look on there and say, okay, this friend or that friend, they've got to work out in. Okay, I didn't get mine in because I might have missed it or I'm tired, but you know what? I'm going to push through and do it. That has been huge, having accountability partners. So the watch plus just having accountability partners really helps me to meet my regular routine workout goal every, every other day. So I'm going to ask you, I'm just going to pause for a second, and I don't mm -hmm. mean to interrupt, but we all know my personality by now. And if you <laughs> don't, that's your fault because I'm the same. Um, it's hard not for me to keep my lips sealed for just a few minutes while someone else is chatting because I just get so excited. But my question for you is, would you say something like a piece of technology like an Apple Watch in essence is a system? I would say yes. It's a form of a system. Well, it takes maintenance, so you've got to charge it every day. The system is you put it on every morning and then you've got to, you've got to pay attention to what you see on it. An act. <laughs> so in essence, and this is why I wanted to pause for a second. And for those that are, are curious, a system and a process doesn't, it can look different. It can honestly look different. This system is helping Danielle get results in an area of her life that's important to you, her that she has prioritized. So just so you know, I have searched long and hard for an Apple Watch here because technology and transportation, and I've got a store ready to call me as soon as it shows up, and I should be expecting oh, mine this week. I've yay. had Samsung's, I've had Garmin's, but now that I'm back on an Apple phone, I really wanted to synchronize the technology to streamline my process because otherwise I won't, I won't use it, I won't get mm -hmm. it set up, and the more streamlined it can be for me because I'm, I'm easily distracted. Yes. Um, and, and again, saying these things and owning these things is not a bad thing, my friends. You can be 100% focused or you can be easily distracted. There are pros and cons to both. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. It's just owning it so you can work with what you have. Okay, so we talked about movement. What else you got? I'll, I'll touch money next. So for me, even before I became self-employed, I'm all about saving money. I actually used to be, I don't know if you're familiar with the show. I don't know if it still comes on extreme couponer. That used to be me. I actually used to be that person who would go in the store and come out with a cart full of stuff. And I've only spent $35 on the whole thing. It's like that used to be me. Don't have the time to do it anymore. But that being said, I do, I, I'm all about saving money, but I'm all about investing as well and making sure that my purchases make sense. So I, um, in my personal life, have set goals to pay down certain, you know, debts, things of that nature, reconsolidating, refinancing, you name it. Um, it's a, it's something that having a mother and a husband who have banking backgrounds, it's something that's been bred into me and they would be not happy if, 
if I had a, an irresponsible relationship with money. Um, so what I've done, uh, like recently with my husband, we talked a little bit about investing and how I can help my money make money and where my money needs to be going and how it needs to be split up on, on a monthly basis to make sure I'm re reaching certain financial goals that I have. Um, I do make room for business and or for, for pleasure, excuse me. So as far as, you know, spending things, massages are something that I absolutely, I don't have, get as many as I should be getting, but I do get, have those. I mentioned to you, my love of purses. It's, it's an addiction. <laughs> It's really bad. And then when you couple to that with shoes, so it's shoes and purses. Haven't, bought, haven't done too much with the shoes because I don't go with the pandemic. Uh, I haven't been going out as much, obviously, but I've got enough shoes to last a lifetime, even if I never buy another pair. <laughs> I'm just looking for something. I'm not trying to turn my back. There's a book I wanted to see if I had that I can show you, but I wonder if I lent it out. And if not, I know the title and I know the author. So I'm just quickly checking here as you were talking, believe it or not, about money. And the book has nothing to do with money, but you touched on massage. Okay, so I'm wondering, give me one second. Mm -hmm. I should have checked this before, knowing that this is recording. But whatever, again, this is me. Um, I must have lent it out, and I don't lend some of my favorite books that I tend to resource out. I will buy another one normally, but that's okay. I just don't see it here. Um, and they're not really in any order. So I know what I'm looking for. Have you read, I don't want to screw up the title, but I'm pretty sure. Have you read the 5 a.m. club? No, no, I haven't. Okay. So Robin Sharma is the author. I actually listened to this one on audio. Okay. But I do have the book, which is what I was looking for. So I could hold it up and show you, but apparently I don't have the book or it's somewhere around the house or I've been using it for something. <laughs> so anyways, or it's lent out. Um, here's the thing, the 5 a.m. club by Robin Sharma. I'm not saying you have to get up at 5 a.m. every day, um, but they do talk about how massages essentially twice a week. Oh, that would be the life. Right? Oh my I'm not there. I'm not there either at this point and I'm not sure if that's a goal but they talk about the whole difference it makes in your life when you're rested and when you're relaxed and how you can give it goes back to that theory of filling your cup but somebody is serving you you're helping somebody else earn a living mm -hmm. while you are taking care of yourself and that mm -hmm. comes back to the money because some people can look at massage as oh it's just a cost I'm getting nothing in return I'm just something I'm putting out but especially to women. And I know most men don't tap into the massage, even in their benefits, mm -hmm. but, um, women, and you touched upon this, how your movement and how your business has helped you serve others in unexpected ways. Mm -hmm. And when we serve people, we grow. And even if we don't realize it, we're, we're cause we're beaming. We, we are one of my clients that I spent three hours doing some home cooked meals and she dropped them off at someone's house cause they were sick. And yeah. she ended up making meals for herself and she was so excited. And I don't even think she realized the glow she was putting out when she did that, when she was sharing with me how good it made her feel. Mm -hmm. And we can't produce that feeling if we're not taking care of ourselves, if we're not investing in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Absolutely. yes, I loved what you said about money and there are so many different dynamics. And again, we can talk about those on different levels one day. Maybe we'll, We'll bring it back for a particular conversation and a particular <laughs> subject. But I think it's fascinating to hear that even at this point, first of all, your outlook on money and what's changed because couponing as great as it is comes from a scarcity perspective, mm -hmm. right? Not having it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. with, without even intentionally realizing it. And then massage and spending is actually investing. It's not just investing in funds, which you're working on doing, and you're thinking of more and you're thinking of next, and that is growth. So I loved everything that you said, and I'm sure our listeners are going to be like, yeah, you know, start somewhere, start changing it. And I was explaining to Danielle, um, my live today was about money, and I do do mirror work every day about an affirmation about money, and I do say thank you to the bills that come in, and at the end of the day, a CEO knows where her money goes. 
and we are all the CEOs of our life. Absolutely. So if you're not aware of where your money goes, that's on you. You can't do anything about it. Awareness is the first step. So doing your budget, looking at your numbers, looking at the bank account, I don't care if you're in the negative, you can't do anything about it. It's just like hopping on that scale for that first time. It's that dreaded feeling of heaviness and weight, the physical weight. Um, and that's what we're trying to alleviate one way or another. It could be a process of looking at your account. It could be the accountability of having to work with someone like Danielle. And, and I'm not saying that like the thing is processes and systems can apply to all of these areas Sure. on a business and professional level and a personal level, sorry, personal and professional. Cause remember they're intermingled. If you're not bringing enough money in on your business, you're going to have to take that from your personal funds or maybe your credit card or whatever it looks like to accommodate those peaks and valleys. But if you don't have that conversation, if you're not aware, how can you plan and prepare? Okay, what's next? We got meals and mindset. All right, so for meals, <laughs> meals is a, it's, it's an ongoing battle for me. But one thing that when I'm, when I'm having a great week, I've planned out my meals for the week. Today's a good day. I've actually planned out my meal and popped it in the crock pot a couple of hours ago. So it's going to be done when I get off of work. Um, that's a good day for me. <laughs> Trying to balance uh, eating healthy, having a teenager who obviously has got different thoughts when it comes to eating healthy. And then everyone has different likes and dislikes in my house. We are literally like the, the family that goes to the restaurant and all three of us, like my husband's ordering American, my daughter's ordering Mexican, and I'm ordering Italian. So that's my life every day. Someone's not happy with dinner. <laughs> but I try to minimize sugar, me personally. Um, and I just try to, um, I'm looking to eat more organically as well. My daughter does have some um, sensitivities as well. So we've, we've actually realized that organic foods are better. And just eating some more farm fresh things as well. So those are all goals for 2022, honestly, that we're trying to keep keep on us uh, on track with and stay on stay in tune with as a family so first takeaway i'm taking from this and you're not going to be surprised is the process that comes with meal planning and you just said it enhances your day and it you can even enhance that even more by taking action mm -hmm. and a really cool way of implementing change right Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and it can look different. It can really look different. All right, let's go into mindset. Yeah. So for mindset, I um, wouldn't be who I am without addressing the spiritual part of it. There is um, a spiritual, I take place in spiritual activities at least three times a week. Um, that is important to me. That is a priority of mine. That contributes to my mindset 100%. Uh, this year, I've also, in addition to the spiritual piece, I've started feeding my mind on other things. And so I've actually taken up, taking back up reading again. So one of the books I've got right now that I'm reading is uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear. I just started it's that. It's amazing. Yes. <sighs> a friend of mine and I, we're reading it together. And then we've got a list of books that we're going to keep reading throughout the year, because I feel like that's important as well to just keep feeding my mind, how I look at things. And again, it's, it's just an overall growth for me. It's not just to increase my knowledge, but I really do want to grow as a person, and then that growth spills over into everyone that I interact with. So that's my goal. So again, let's tie this into what you, what you do for a living and you help people streamline their processes and systems. And without that, you wouldn't have time for the spirituality or if you go to church, whatever that looks like, you, that would not be a priority. You would not be able to totally be in the moment if you didn't have systems and processes in place. Absolutely, 100% agree. I do um, probably something different than you do as part of my morning routine, but one of the first things I do is my meditation app. And I use Calm, and I can't believe it. And now here's where, here's where things change. When I first started using it, I was paying it monthly. Mm -hmm. Then I decided to make that commitment to myself, and it is a commitment. A commitment means an investment. I pay annually now. I don't miss a beat. 
yeah, I might not do the Calm app on the weekends, mm -hmm. but Monday to Friday, it's like one of the first things I do while still in, I get up, go to the bathroom, go back in bed and do my meditation for 10 minutes. It, the one I use works for me. It grounds me just like yours grounds you. But mm -hmm. if I immediately hop on the phone or start dealing with clients or not have that morning routine, I could still go see a client at 7.30. Like it, that's not a problem, right? But it's knowing that this is done first. Some of the other things I might not do, like I might not linger in bed and respond to people. I might save that for later in the day. Mm -hmm. But that meditation app followed up with affirmations every single day. There's a YouTube one I like to listen to, Bob Barker. Mm -hmm. He's amazing. Barker, Baker. Bob Baker, one of the two. I always, always mix it up. But he is amazing and I can send the links. And I think it's Bob Baker. Um, anyways, I, I could be wrong on that. Completely amazing. And this is part of, again, it's a process. So mm -hmm. what I wanted to do with Danielle here and highlight those four pillars is there are processes in every single thing that we do without thinking about it. So when we intentionally think about it, how much more can we streamline our life so we can do more of what we love, whether it's investing that time in our business or personal growth, or with friends or family, or getting ahead of the game. Wow, talking to moms here, what would it feel like to get ahead of the game and be in proactive mode, whether it's with your money, your meals, your movement, creating a plan? Yeah, how nice would it be to have your freezer stocked with those meals that you can just grab and put heaven. in? Heaven, right? Um, and none of this would happen without processes. So a scary topic um, for some people that have really no idea what it could look like or how it could look like to them. What we've done is we've put it into perspective for the everyday person, not just the solopreneur, the entrepreneur, the network marketing or social seller, but the everyday person that has goals and ambitions that they are trying to reach. Or more importantly, they just don't want to stay where they're at right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else would you add? Um, I don't know that I would add too much more, but um, the start somewhere part really resonated with me because one thing that I remember when I first started out that I had to wrap my head around, especially because I have a systems type of brain. That's why I'm in the line of work that I'm in. Um, and so sometimes for me, if things don't fit somewhere nicely, then I have a tendency to not address them because they don't fit into this, this, this outline that I may have. But when it comes to systems and processes, you've got to start somewhere. You've got to create the system, even if there isn't one in place. And so with all of the things that you've touched on, the four points that you've touched on, you've got to start somewhere and create something where there's nothing, right? So like, if you say you want to start the workout, regularly like i said with me i i knew i couldn't do it every day but i said okay every other day let's see if i can do it maybe with you that's once a week uh with the meals if you want to plan out meals and you know you, it's it's hard and it takes a lot of time for those of you who do it you know that it takes a lot of time to plan out a meal for a week but maybe you just decided like for me i happen to have something thawing so that i could pop it in the crock pot first thing this morning and so today i know that when i finish up work dinner is done. You've got to start somewhere um, with all of the things that we've addressed, even with, you know, your relationship with money. If there's a small amount that you feel comfortable with, not, not even having to think about it, $25, something small, whatever it is, start. Um, and then that's how you make these things into more permanent processes is, is you start somewhere. So I guess I wanted to say that it's not going to necessarily fit in a perfect box starting out. Um, but if you could at least like start a list of what it is you want to do. And then, as you mentioned earlier, prioritize it because you can't, I am a firm believer of not doing all things at once. Cause it's, it's just impossible. You can't prioritize the thing that's taking up the most of your time right now. And then I would work through that list and check everything off as you go. I completely agree. I even sometimes put things on my list just to check them off. So I feel like I've gotten more done. <gasps> of course you have to. <laughs> Well, because there's a, there are things that we do. I don't write morning routine down, but there are things that we do that we don't realize. Exactly. Right. And I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm the, like I'm a morning person. So how easy is it for me to be sitting there and just responding to people, but then thinking when it's time to do my follow ups that oh I haven't done any yet today. 
well, yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. Right. Give yourself credit. And when you write things on your list and check them off, not only are you figuring out where your time is spent and time is energy, time is more valuable than money, a separate conversation. Um, and the reason why I say it's more valuable than money is because we can't make it back. Nope. We can't go back in time. We can't fix it. Your time is probably the highest commodity in your life. And we don't treat it as such. We give it away to a job that may or may not respect us. They just need, a, we're, we're a number. And if you're lucky and you do what you love, like we get to do, that's a different conversation. Again, that's, that's a different story, but I'm talking about the people that aren't happy, that, that walk with their head down, that feel like they have no choice. There's always a choice. So Danielle, how, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna definitely include your contact information um, when I do the intro and the blurb to today's Heart to Heart. Mm -hmm. and it's going to be available but can you just let everybody know how they can best reach you sure sure so i am on social media i'm on instagram um, i can be found under cutting edge ops that's ops cutting edge ops and I, it's the same bio for linkedin as well as well as facebook and then i have a website cuttingedgeops.com um, i've got a contact button on there so you can feel free to fill out the contact information to reach me in any of those ways i've got I've got it covered. So <laughs> any awesome. of those means happy to chat. Awesome. And um, guys, I would love for you to reach out to Danielle and get to know her a little bit better and see how she can infuse positive processes and systems into your life. So you can start living the life of your dreams. Thank you so much for having me on today. Such a pleasure. This episode was a little bit closer to like 50 minutes, um, but I think it's wonderful. I, I know we scratched the surface on quite a few things. So thanks for joining us and um, have yourself a great day. You too. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.